know, it's all multiple expansion now because it's not coming off some, you know, really robust earnings increases. So multiple expansion, how far can it get you? Now, it's really not just multiple expansion. That's what it looks like. But what it is, is back to the assumption that we're going to have, as Amarosa pointed out, a couple of hikes this year. I think one's definitely for Wait, sure. Wait, you cuts. I mean cuts. I'm okay. sorry, cuts. Um, I think one's for sure. Possibly two will be the base case, but we'll hear from Powell in a little bit of time. I'm actually surprised the market is moving as high as it is right now. Sure, the inflation report was great, but generally it gets a little jittery in front of uh, in, in front of the FOMC. And Friday's jobs number was, while there were some some dovish things in there, overall I thought it was a pretty strong number and cause for some consternation. But nonetheless, that's really rear view mirror going forward. I think that the Fed is ready to cut and um, I still I still have money I add to my exposure which we'll talk about later right. on and so I'm, I'm just over fully invested at this point uh, and I think it continue there's always that landmine surprise which is something you don't expect I'm not talking about the Fed I'm talking about you know further geopolitical issues we still don't know you know in terms of the presidency which one's going to be good or bad for but the that, markets. But that's ways away I mean I think today we got to really it focus is ways on away Fed. but if you talk to some including yesterday on the show, some of you had, uh, people who believe some, some of that's being pulled in right. to the market already. You know, I think the election risk is in the back of everybody's mind, especially following Europe, uh, yeah. the parliamentary elections there and some of the snap elections. But yeah. again, our election here in the U.S. still not until November. We're going to focus on the Fed today. Kerry, over to you. You know, he mentioned landmines, which kind of just triggered me to think about the stickiness of housing inflation in that CPI report. Oh, uh, what's Joe smiling at? smiling like, I, I just, uh, he just hit the, you know, I the just billion told you, dollar Steve, lottery. He's doing things, that just, yeah. uh, just a a step he's above you. Money. That's why he's over here. He said, give me a minute. I'm making some yeah, deals. Yeah. I'm making some moves. We're going to get around to him. You had your turn. Now it's Carrie Farzell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I want to hear what Carrie has to say. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the reason the market is so strong today is because what everyone cares about is inflation. It's just another data point that this is the most important factor for the market and for investors today. Of course it matters to the Fed, but the market loved the fact that inflation was cooling a little bit. Not a lot. A little bit is just fine and it gives Fed some ammunition. What they needed in order to do any indication that they're going to stick with this rate cut move or, or more than one move is for something to go their way and the inflation numbers did go their way. So I think that you've got, you know, you hit that two strike because we have lower inflation and the Fed can, I think, indicate they're not right. going to do anything today but I think the indication is definitely going to be positive lower inflation but some sticky parts are still staying sticky housing being one of them yeah well housing has been the problem all along and everyone says that housing will eventually rent will eventually start to show the benefit meaning of increased supply there is a lot more rental units that have been built over the last couple of years they are coming on the market it is a slow process because you have to wait for you know leases to turnover uh, but we still think that we'll see that in the next few months all right a lot of anticipation joe i mean steve weiss was over there waiting for you to talk he he saw you on your computer he saw you doing notes still he's like what's, what's going on what's going on so what is going on well i was just wondering if steve was talking if i'd be able to talk during this show or the next time I'm on yeah. Yeah. i was worried there if was i had my way joe <laughs> um, my i know what your way was <laughs> your reaction to cpi what you think about the fed decision coming up what do you expect in a hawkish j powell a dovish j powell did this cpi report did it clear the way for two cuts uh, frank i've always believed that we would get a cut a cut in 2024. The possibility for two cuts is, is real. I've never understood the premise of why people have talked about stagflation, the possibility that we're hiking rates. There's a clear disinflationary trend that's in place, and it's even stronger in the rest of the world. Last evening, we had the uh, inflation reading from China. You're seeing clear deflation there. There's concerns about demand, manufacturing at a 20-month low. So I've never really pivoted away from that the Federal Reserve is looking for the reason to adjust monetary policy. And if they weren't looking for a reason to adjust monetary policy, why would they do what they did at the last meeting, which is take the balance sheet and pare back the uh, mat maturities that uh, the securities that are mat maturing off the balance sheet for treasuries from 16 billion to 25 billion. So they've already indicated and through their actions, they're adjusting monetary policy. To me, that's clear. Look, I think overall for the market, you don't fight the prevailing trend. NVIDIA, 
Apple, and today the okay. S&P is We're, teaching us that lesson. We are going to get to tech in just a minute, but again, you're right. Tech it continues to power it's, the it's markets, not, both no, the Nasdaq and the S&P. It's, 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 it's respecting the prevailing trend, and I think the viewers have to understand that. And this trend feels a lot. Look, people like to make the analogy on inflation to the 70s. That was the wrong analogy. It's 94, 95, 96. This feels so much 2024 to me like 96. 96 presidential re-election year, the market went up 20 percent after going up 33 percent in 95. And remember what happened in 95. It was a pivot in monetary policy from 1994 where everything went down. Felt the same as 2022. So I think that's the template. All right, we're going to bring in CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leisman down in D.C. Again, we're under two hours away from that Fed decision. Steve's going to head to the lockup in just a minute to await that decision. But, Steve, good afternoon. Good to see you. Uh, what are you looking at right now? What are you considering and weighing uh, the CPI report? According to a lot of people on the street, that clears the way for two cuts. Uh, yeah, I, I, or at least to be, to be forecast for two cuts, depending upon additional data that may come in. I think Powell's going to balance two things. One is he's going to be happy about this morning's report, not only because it was good in and of itself, it's the second good one in a row, and it helps support this idea that what we saw at the beginning of the year was sort of, you know, temporary beginning of the year price changes rather than a reacceleration in inflation. The other thing, obviously, it does is it keeps alive the idea of rate cuts, but he's got to balance the exuberance of the market. So I was listening very carefully to just how exuberant your guests are, your panel is today, uh, Frank, in terms of uh, is, this, is this a green light for them? I, I, I don't think he cares that much about the stock market, but he certainly doesn't want to see over exuberance, doesn't want to get back to the situation he had uh, not too long ago where the market was pricing in six rate cuts because the Fed was thinking about three. So, yeah, they'll adjust downward by one, by one tick, I think, the number of rate cuts that are expected. But he's going to try to be a little bit more measured because he still is going to say that he doesn't have the confidence, I believe, to cut rates, though he's maybe a step closer than he was. I mean, Steve, I want to be clear. So you're saying you believe the, the, the indication from the Dobb plot back in March, it was three cuts. You believe now it's going to show two. Uh, I want to hit on something. You and I, we actually chatted about this earlier today. I had New York Times reporter Gina Smilik on Worldwide Exchange. She said that the Fed, they actually don't prepare the Dobb plot or they tweak it after CPI. So this CPI report actually had a lot of weighting to it. Does that jive with the reporting that you're doing as well? Yeah, sure. I mean, they don't chisel it in stone uh, uh, several weeks before the uh, the meeting. They have the ability to adjust it, and they might adjust it. Um, and it's a pretty close call. In other words, this two cuts versus one cut being priced in, it does take a bunch of, uh, uh, of officials to move their forecast to get just the one in there. Uh, so two is an easier call to make because you don't expect that much change. Um, but I think today is going to support that idea, Frank, that, that is likely to have two cuts projected for the year. But look, the market's on notice that the Fed can say anything they want in that summer of economic projections. The data is going to determine what actually happens. And if we do show continued progress, then, yeah, um, you know, I wanted to, to kind of uh, quote the Bee Gees, you know, staying alive here when it comes to these, <laughs> these rate cuts. I was going to start off saying, uh, you know, but I think I spared you all the singing. <laughs> hey, Steve, it's Joe. So so how much is what's going on with global central banks, the ECB? I cited earlier the deflationary pressures in China. How much of that is on the mind of the Federal Reserve and also in the conversation in that room if, in fact, they need to respond to it? So I think it's a second derivative indicator for them. And I'll tell you why. I think that central banks make their policy based upon domestic considerations. That's one. But two, if the ECB is lowering rates and if China has deflation, then that suggests to them that the impulse when it comes to prices globally is going to be helpful to the Federal Reserve when it comes to fighting domestic inflation. It's not a first order uh, indicator because, look, the CPI, the PCE, those are going to be the ones. I want to make one more point, Joe, which is that if you look at the summary of economic projections, the Fed had forecast 2.6% core PCE inflation for the entire year. Goldman just came out with a forecast based upon today's CPI that mm -hmm. suggests it's going to be 2.6 percent in June. And by the way, that 2.6 they forecast was in the context of three rate cuts. So there's a bit of a sort of underlying inconsistency, I want to say, in this idea. Now they go down to two, even though they're ahead of the game in the inflation that they forecast. All right. Our Steve Leisman, thank you very much.